Congregation, please rise for the family. together of who she was and who she will remain as in all of our hearts. I am honored to have been asked by the family to speak on their behalf today. My name is Trevor Birak, pastor of the Family Church. Through the years we've developed a close relationship to Carrie and her family. It's a relationship that we treasure. Ashley was a member of our youth group in its infancy. She would sing on our youth worship team and offer her help in the Fall Fair food booth. In short, she was one of us. I am honored to speak about Ashton today, to bring hope and comfort while remembering the amazing person she truly was. There would be nothing to grieve had there not been an abundance of love freely given and received in all of Ashley's relationships with family and friends. The greater the love, the deeper we feel the loss. 
Ashlyn lived fully. And so our sense of loss is also full, and we are feeling it deeply. We are together here to celebrate the gift of Ashlyn's presence among us, and we are also here to grieve and to say goodbye. We have each been touched in profound ways by Ashlyn's generous life, so there will be both tears and laughter. They are all welcome and important as we share this time together. Let us pray. Lord, we come before you today in grief and in celebration of who Ashlyn was. I thank you for what a gift she was. Let your Holy Spirit of comfort be with us today. Amen. Please join with me in these congregational songs. <coughs>
And he wrote this song as an encouragement and exhortation, and I hope that we can find this as an encouragement, as it gives us a glimpse at God's heart. So Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Fear the Lord, you his holy people, for those who fear him lack nothing. The lions may grow weak and hungry, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, my children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Whoever of you loves life and desires to see many good days, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Turn from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their cry. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to blot out their name from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord hears them. He delivers them from their troubles. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. The righteous person may have many troubles, but the, but the Lord delivers him from them all. He protects all his bones, not one of them will be broken. Evil will slay the wicked, the foes of the righteous will be condemned. The Lord will rescue his servants. No one who takes refuge in him will be condemned.
there's never been a day where life will be the same without you. And I know I will have to find a way to keep going. But I'd be lying if I said it'd be easy. Because the truth is, it won't be. I would like to thank you for all the times you were on my shoulder to cry on. And all the times you took care of Samantha and I couldn't. You made our lives better. You were a part of the single Pringles, which was a, our really bad group of friends, which we all made a lot of really bad jokes and we were all really single, so. <laughs> and in the end, the only one left was Sharissa because Ashley found the love of her life. You, Sammy, me, and Cheyenne were the four musketeers. We went to concerts together. We acted like complete idiots. And we danced way too hard for absolutely no reason with no music at all. <laughs> you were always there. People keep saying life goes on without them. But the truth is, it doesn't. We learn to move forward, but you're never gone because you're always in our hearts. Your light has filled the darkness. I don't even know what to say in times like this. Other than that, we never said goodbye. We said I love you with a hug after, or a hug and then and I love you because we knew our time was precious. Between all the mud wars, snowball fights, sleepovers, hangouts, the laughs and the cries, you were there to show us that best friends, best friends were true. And between all the bad selfies and the good ones, the vines, and let's be honest, those were terrible. Everyone knows that. And the music, please. And when we would have sleepovers and Ainsley would bombard us because she wouldn't want to leave us alone. And we loved that. We did. I know I can't see you anymore. But I feel you everywhere. And for that, I'm thankful. I'll love you forever, Ashley. We watched as you laughed your first laugh, cried your first tear, took your first steps, and became to us so dear. With time you grew, and we did too, and so did your little angel wings. You brought laughter and joy to us through the good times and the bad times, and through them all you grew, and we did too. As every sun rose and every sunset, you grew from a teeny little girl to a precious toddler to the wide out girl with a sassy attitude. You stole our hearts and made them yours, and as you grew, ours did too. You grew up strong, you grew up pretty, you grew up brave and bold. You stood your ground and spoke your mind, and always loved with your heart so true and kind. And even though you could be as stubborn as heck at times, you grew and we grew too, and so did your little angel wings. Sometimes we grew together, sometimes we grew apart, but you, already, you had our hearts no matter what. Now we grow without you, for your little angel wings grew and grew, they grew grew so big and strong, they flew off with you. <sighs> Sorry. <clears throat> Up to heaven they flew with you to be God's special angel, and a part of us flew there too. You stole a piece of our hearts to take along with you to remind you of the love that grew between us strong and true. And now even though you're up in heaven, our hearts still grow with love for you. Even though we're broken, sad, and don't know what to do without you, our love will always grow for you. So you be brave and strong, and we will too. Because even though we're apart for 
for now, our love will grow and grow till it brings us back to you. And when that day comes, the love that we grew together will find its way home to you, and we will too. For we too have little angel wings, and when they're big and strong like yours, they'll fly us right to home to heaven to always be with you. I wrote that for Ashley. before it's even been graduated. You have to beg to differ with the stroke of fate that took that life so soon. No, this wasn't just a casual swoon or a fairy tale prince breaks the spell and up she arises alive and well. No, this is a sea of agony where you keep blinking and she keeps sleeping. And our blinking eyes become walking feet driven onward like a mechanical fleet that forgets we need to retreat to a quiet place where we can hug our knees, skip a beat. For this girl was the pulsing beat, beat, beat of her circles as she bounced into rooms with that beaming smile. And before one word was spoken, people knew they could come sit a while. A storyteller was she, and her presence brought energy, joy, open vulnerability, refusing to live in denial. She faced what was hard. She named it, no matter how vile. Awake to the pain life continued to send. She quietly opened her hands to what it did extend. But as pain, the greatest teacher took a toll. She wrestled with whether she could hold herself together as life spun out of control. In the midst of the broken situations leaking into her reality, she poured her blood, sweat, and tears into the freedom of a God-driven municipality, making in her heart the kind of space, the kind of place where she was so connected to the God who loved her so that she would pursue the strength to forgive. To let it all go, to let go and let God, was a mantra made visible by her radiant smile. It shone like a work of art through the brave sheen of tears that dropped from her transparent eyes to her transparent heart. This heart that loved so passionately had a special room all its own for the children she adored so unabashedly. She didn't wait for them to come. She ran and then some, and as they thronged about her, their faces shone for they had received the kind of snuggles and hugs that whispered how they could be free to just be. Their worth affirmed by the mother's heart she offered so naturally. This contagious love she birthed in the young ones touched us older ones too. At youth, she needed no check-in sheet, for she was there week by week, not to just take up a seat, but to leap into action. She didn't need a reaction, but exhibited a passion that gave her eyes to notice the guy who was sad. Hands to offer an extra hand, feet to walk towards those who needed her, and time offered so freely to missions trips, to fundraisers, at school and at home too. Her revolving door heart continued to extend an invitation to life that moved beyond the stipend or passing trends, and instead a commitment to people, young and old, foe or friend. That is the calling to which she did bend. Her soft face match the heart that wore it. Its rays of warmth came in waves that reminded us that to feel is to live. And live we shall, even as our lips curve down and a grief-stricken frown cast shadows on the life without this girl. And live we shall some more as our lips curve up and a smile stretching across our face reaches from our head to our toes from a memory of her so serene we laugh, forgetting our woes. Though the hole she leaves cannot be replaced, her open hands lending a parting plea that we, her people, might risk opening ours as bravely.
shadows and the stars appear. There is no one there to dry your tears. I could hold you for a million years to make you feel mad.
all of her friends can remember a time when they had to wrestle her to have a turn holding whoever was in their care, be it Gracie, Levi, Maverick, and of course, Daxton and Dominic. Ashlyn was that safe place for many children, from her siblings, Dalen, Kaylee, and Ainsley, to the children at church that she had just met. If there was a kid needing love, Ashlyn was there with a warm embrace. Maybe this comes from being the oldest, being the first, the firstborn of Carrie, the first grandchild of Karen and Harold, the first baby to be born among Carrie's friends. She was the first, and she did not let you forget it. <laughs> Some say she was spoiled, but I saw that she was loved by so many. She was tenacious, but in a way that was filled with grace and gratitude. She would get what she wanted, but she made you feel like it didn't cost you anything. She had a big heart, full of love for the people around her. A heart that she no doubt got from her mother Carrie and her Nana Karen. Two people with the biggest hearts I know. They lived out a life where everyone is welcome, even if it costs them dearly. They truly know the sacrifice that comes with love. But after they counted the cost, they determined that love is still worth it and that they have set that example for their children. This was always clearly displayed at birthday parties. Oh man, the birthday parties. Kids of all ages, strangers and family, all meeting around fancy castles, food, presents, cake, an Elsa impersonator and probably water balloons as well. They knew how to throw birthday parties. Always a tornado of kids, presents, and fun, leaving you feel simultaneously invigorated and exhausted. Probably a bit sunburned and a little damp from water balloons as well. Ashlyn's big heart led her to live fully. One of our youth leaders, Anna, said it beautifully. She offered, this is her speaking of Ashlyn, she offered an open invitation to the world around her to know her and to become a part of her joy. Ashlyn lived with joy. She had an infectious sing-song laughter that seemed to bubble up out of her. I've spoken to a few people that say they can still hear her laughing, the way it bubbled out of her. And it's still so infectious. She was helpful. Sometimes without being asked, she would jump in if she saw a need. She would cancel her plans so she could babysit someone if they needed her to at the last minute. She was always up for whatever adventure was on the horizon. Some of those beautiful pictures that you see displayed were taken by my lovely wife. Ashlyn and Elizabeth made a great pair. Because Elizabeth had ideas, and Ashlyn was always game to try them out. They went to Swan Lake along with Ashlyn's friend Jenna. Around this time last year, it was fall in the north, so it was cold. Elizabeth had this picture in mind that involved Ashlyn sitting in a chair in the lake wearing a gown and a flowered crown in her hair. Ashlyn trudged into the frigid water without complaint. Now we all know how much Ashlyn hated being cold, but there she was. With a beautiful smile to greet the world, she didn't complain. She pushed through the chattering shivers and the full body goosebumps to capture some beautiful moments. In fact, sometimes it was hard to tell if you were asking too much of Ashlyn, because she would always give you what you needed without complaint. That's just who she was. With full makeup, 
and hair done, she would go down to the river at youth group and cover herself in mud. And not just any mud, river mud. The kind that stinks. The kind that sticks with you. The kind that just gets everywhere. Speaking of youth group, she loved being a part of her group, her community. At different times, she attended Bethel, Family Church, and most recently, Alliance Youth. And she was there 100% ready to dive into whatever it was next. She loved being a part of those groups, making memories with her friends. They were experts at getting into just enough trouble. <laughs> just enough to make people smile and remember what it was like to be a kid. Ashlyn was at the stage of her life where the world of being a kid collides with the impending adulthood. She was poised and graceful, but also loved having fun and watching Disney movies. Most of us at one time or another have sung along to Disney songs with her. She especially loved Moana. And if you hadn't seen it, she was gonna get you to watch it. She loved chicken nuggets. Before, during, or after a busy day, there was always time to grab some chicken nuggets. This past June, Ashton um, was a grad escort, and we had a photo shoot scheduled just before the red carpet. It was a hot day, the mosquitoes were horrendous, and we plowed through swampy land and forest to get the perfect shot. And Ashlyn would take as many pictures as we wanted, as long as she got to have chicken nuggets after. <laughs> and we all walked into McDonald's, a sweaty mess, except for Ashlyn. She was in pristine condition. Her hair and makeup were still perfection. Jewelry still in place. She was just missing those uncomfortable heels, which had been ditched. Nothing was going to stop her from getting chicken nuggets. <laughs> Splish, splashy, ashy was what some friends and family called her. Some of the best nicknames are the ones where no one knows who came up with them or how long they've been around, they just stuck. Ashlyn loved to bowl. Or at least she loved being at the bowling alley. It was important to her family, so it was important to her she helped put a team together this, this year, including her best friend, Kiara. Even though she knew she could never, put, as she put it, beat those girls from Prince George. <laughs> but it was about sharing moments with the people she loved. As a baby, she spit up a lot. This was a bit of an understatement. Everyone knew to always bring a change of clothes if they were going to be around Ashland and to watch and watch out for those chompers. <laughs> Ashland was a tenacious biter as a baby, something I found out. And no one quite remembers who it was who finally had to bite her back to get her to stop. But thankfully it worked. She loved to be in her swing. But it had to be swinging hard, rocking fast. This is what calmed her, moving fast in her swing. I don't know if she ever grew out of that. Quads, swings, trampolines. She loved the adventure. In her last few months, she loved spending time with her boyfriend, Torn. When he would push her on the swing, it would never be high enough, it would never be fast enough. When she rode with him on the quad, she wanted him to go faster. Torn, thank you for bringing her so much joy. When Dalen came around, Ashlyn cut off her bangs in silent protest. <laughs> but it wasn't long before three-year-old Ashlyn was scooping up Dalen and loving him. Dalen may have been the start of her love affair with babies. Now, we've all witnessed Dalen and Ashlyn fighting. <laughs> it 
was often. But she loved him, and he loved her. When it, when it came to someone else picking on Dalen, Ashi was the first to come to his defense. Only she could pick on Dalen. Well, she, Kaylee, and Ainsley, they would gang up on him. And he would always take the bait that they threw out. They knew his buttons, but I think he knew hers as well. In the end, we are all better to have strong women in, their, in our lives. <coughs> Dalen, Ashley loves you. What a gift Ashlyn was to all of us, but especially your sisters. Who she was to Kaylee, we may never fully know the extent of. What a great role model she was for Kaylee. Now, Kaylee is different from Ashley, but so much the same as well. So much of the same beautiful heart and the courage that Ashlyn had is in her too. It just doesn't always look the same. Kaylee, you like Ashlyn, have faced some really hard things. But like Ashley, you carry a quiet confidence and an assurance that you are deeply loved, which I know helps you get through the hard parts. Ashley loves you, Kaylee. Ainsley. Ashley loves her baby sister, Ainsley. Ashley was 10 years old when Ainsley joined the family, so she got to help take care of her. Maybe this is where she learned how to take care of children so well. Ashley helped instill a strength and a confidence in Ainsley that has been so evident in the last few weeks as she has been recovering. Ainsley, I see the same spark in you, the fiery determination that we saw so clearly in Ashlyn. Ainsley, Ashley loves you. Karen and Harold, you were a constant presence in Ashlyn's life. You were always there for her. To buy her things, yes, but so much more. You offered her a space to be herself. Thank you, Nana and Papa, for pouring so much of yourselves into her. She would not have been the confident, beautiful young lady she was without your ever-loving arms. As she loves you. How can you sum up a mother's love for her little girl? You can't. <coughs> Carrie loves her kids more than life itself. <coughs> Carrie, you have raised a wonderful daughter who brought so much joy and laughter to this world. For this, everyone in this room is eternally grateful. You were her rock in all the good times and the bad. She knew she was safe to come to you. In her success and in her mistakes, she shared them all with you. You were always there. Thank you, Carrie, for bringing Ashlyn up to be the strong, confident young woman. Ashley dearly loves you. For all of the other family members who have been there for her, who helped raise her as if she were your own, who held her up in her weaknesses and celebrated her strengths, thank you. Ashley loves you. Ashton loved being surrounded by action and excitement. 
She was drawn to concerts. Everyone knows that. That's why you get her for Christmas, is concert tickets. She also loved YC and, of course, the fall fair. She wanted to make memories with others, to share moments. She wanted to insert herself into the bigger picture of life around her. Even smaller things became moments to her. Birthday parties, youth outings, gatherings with her friends, they were all so important to her. I want to take a few minutes to talk about moments and the impact that they have on our lives. Scripture is a window that allows us to see into a different reality, a window into God's heart and God's soul. In the words from the prophet Isaiah, God reminds us, do not be afraid, I am with you. Do not be discouraged, I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my strong right hand. When you go through deep waters, I am with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fires of brutality, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you, because I, the Eternal One, am your God. The prophet Isaiah is describing moments in your life that could be too much to bear. And we all have these moments. Most of us may feel like we're walking through deep waters right now. Our grief feels almost too much to bear. But God says to us, He will never leave us. He is here with us now in good times and in the seemingly impossible. He never leaves us and his love never fails. Now the quality that Ashland exemplified that was the most profound to me was goodness. You may recognize that from a list of the fruit of the Spirit found in Galatians chapter 5. Now the word goodness means so much more than just being a good person. It was a concept of seeing good in others, in the world, and seeing through the lens of goodness. It means choosing to see joy through the pain, to see the person through their behavior and to choose to see more than just as we see normally at first glance, to look on the brighter side. Ashlyn was that goodness. <coughs> she could look you in the eye and see the good in every one of you. She had a gift for it. Ashlyn was that goodness. Even when she got the short end of the stick, she found good in it. She looked deeper than what was just on the surface. She saw moments in life as opportunities to see good in people. And she inspired us all <coughs> to do the same. Lean into the moments, even the ones that seem like they're just too painful. Let us continue to be inspired by her, to love like she loved, to see the good in others, to take chances, to be brave and adventurous, and lean in to the moments. Whether they're our highest peak or our lowest valley, because we know we never walk this road alone. So do your hair and makeup and jump in the mud. Take pictures in freezing cold lakes. Eat peanut butter and pickles late at night and into the morning. Hold all the babies, even the ones that spit up and bite, but especially the ones that spit up and bite. 
Find these moments in life. Find these moments of joy and grief, moments of adventure in the wilderness of loss. Love like she loved. Because she loved like Jesus loves us. God is with us. He sees us. And he fully knows us. In the coming moments of life, may you find strength in him. May he be your hiding place, your refuge, and your lighthouse in the storm. This is the poet's reminder for us in Psalms 46. God is our shelter and our strength. When troubles are near, God is near, ready to help. When the earth spins out of control, we are sure and fearless. When the mountains crumble and the waters run wild, we are sure and fearless. Even in heavy winds and huge waves, or as mountains shake, we are sure and fearless. Be still and know that I am God. With that in mind, let us in silence be still and be assured of the presence of God among us.
You're floating down the stairs You're fixing up your hair like you do How will I be a mess The second that I see you You won't be surprised It happens every time It's nothing new It's always on a night like tonight I think that you can read my mind
I'd like to offer a prayer and a benediction. But before I do that, <clears throat> a few announcements. Please join us for further celebration after the service. That'll be downstairs. There's a memorial scrapbook in the foyer. It would mean a lot to the family if you could put a memory in there. And for those in the balcony, um, if you could please remain in the balcony section until the family has exited the sanctuary, please. Now if we could all stand, and uh, I'm just gonna offer a prayer. Just bow your heads with me. Lord, we thank you for the gift Ashlyn was to each of us. Thank you for her beautiful heart and her infectious goodness, her bubbling laughter. I thank you for every life she touched. I thank you for your presence in these moments of Ashlyn's life. And I thank you for your presence here and now. May your presence never leave us. My prayer is that we would recognize your presence, that we would embrace your presence like Ashlyn did. Thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name. Amen. May the truth that sets us free, and the hope that never dies, and the love that casts out fear be with us now, and hold us into our future. Let us go in the peace of the risen Christ. Amen. between